Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is a quick overview of how translation work. I'll be covering a few different aspects of the how this basically works. I'll be also covering how to use Google Documents with it and explain a little bit about creating custom keys for your translation as well as how to use it in procedures and then a in-game example at the end of the video for basically how it basically works in game. So with that being said, let's uh, get started after the intro. All right, so before we get started, I have a simple overlay just to basically display the variable that will basically, or the, the uh, display of variable that we'll be using for translation when we're replacing it, depending on uh, what item the player has in their main hand. We'll cover that in just a little bit, but uh, basically this is the, where we're gonna be basically um, displaying the variable. So I should just mention that quickly. Now if we go down to translate or localization on the left tab of your workspace, then you can basically configure your mods translation here. Now by default, you'll just have the English US underscore US language. And then if you want to create a new language, uh, if you have someone able to translate it for you, then you can basically click the little green plus icon right on that tab or right next to the US or EN underscore US translation and if you don't have a language there already then it should be that one if not then it should be whatever language is later on there so there's a whole list of different languages you can basically translate into and that will play into what language the game is configured to basically display so if the player is actually playing minecraft under the french translation then it will obviously be displaying in french so that's basically how that's all set up. You can basically create a new language uh, the way that you basically want to. Now, after you've basically created a new language, by default, it'll be the default language that you've basically created or, or the English language. So you'll have to translate it all over um, from the English language to a French language. So in our case, the um, I've already added an entry for the French translation, which is gold, I think. So that's OR. And I'm not very familiar with the French language, so I'm not going to do too much more with that. It's just an example. However, you can create a new entry by clicking add localization entry and what this will do is it will add a new line to your document. And this is handy if you want to add specific translation for certain things that aren't necessarily elements in the game itself. So how this basically normally works is you have a type of category before your namespace and then you finally have your translation. Uh, variable which you would basically use to identify what the um, thing that you're basically translating. So in our case, um, I've basically just gone with or dot localization dot and then I've gone with the name that I've basically given it. So in most cases, that's how my M creators set up to basically do uh, blocks are block and then dot your namespace dot what kind of block it is. Um, in our case, I can basically name it whatever I want. Just keep in mind that it should be unique to your mod, so make sure to have your namespace in some sort of structure so it's easier for um, it to be more compatible for other mods and stuff as well. So in our case, I'm just going to go or and dot local probably misspelled that it's fine and then dot I uh, will go diamond 
uh, underscore or. Now one thing to note that this should all be lowercase English characters. You should not use any spaces and it also uh, can support periods and underscores. So make sure to use a structure similar to that. After you've finished creating your key, just make sure to uh, click OK. And then you want to basically give it a name. So I'm going to call it uh, diamond under or diamond or, and this will be the text that is displayed. So you can use spaces on this section here and capital letters and other characters and stuff like that. But uh, on the key location where the key language key is, this has to be in your regular format for lowercase periods, underscores, etc. But don't use uh, foreign characters or any pretty much character or capital letters at all, as this might mess up the actual localization and potentially cause some issues for later down the road for you. After you've done that, what you'll need to do is actually go and translate it. So there's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, you can actually export it, upload it to somewhere for your um, people that are translating it, can translate it into and then give it back to you. Or you could basically um, translate it in the box here. You could basically translate it and paste in a certain translation key. That's an option. You can also export it by clicking the export current language and it should be saved to a s or a csv file so i'm going to actually override this french file that i have and then we're going to basically open up a google spreadsheet so this is where i'm going to cover how to basically use it in google spreadsheets so let's get started with that So we have a brand new spreadsheet and we already have a sheet down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go import or pardon me, file import. And then what we're going to do is go to upload. And then what we're going to do is select a file from your device. And then we're going to go to our desktop where we saved that file. And then we're going to select the CSV file that we basically created. And then what we're going to do is click open and after which it should give us a option to basically uh, import the spreadsheet that we want to. So we can create a new spreadsheet. We could uh, create a insert into a sheet, which is basically the sheets are down here on these different tabs. Now that's one way that you could basically do it. Um, I find that it's more effective if you have multiple languages and you want to manage a team that can basically help you translate and stuff like that although you can break it up into specific sh sheets itself or spreadsheets and then have one translation language for a certain language and then work with that so there's a few different ways but the easiest way to actually import a translation is just through sheet and then you want to basically select the separator type and then select comma and then click import data so you'll have a sheet like this after and if we want to basically just select all the tables from a to z, a to d and then we're just going to drag them over just a little bit where we can get a little bit more room for basically translating you can keep doing this until you get enough room to actually see what you're working with. So what we have here is our French translation. You can ignore these uh, line two and line three. So these you don't need to worry about. Everything under this line here is the one that you would basically, basically be translating to. This is basically just a reference and this is the key that it would basically be translating to the same thing as the one in your mcrater file here. So that's basically what that is. So your team can basically um, call it uh, whatever they want. So I'm just going to call it die mond because I can't really speak French. So <laughs> we're just going to use that for a example. Mm -hmm. 
And then what we're going to do is actually make sure that our permissions for the document and our team can basically use it. Now, anyone with the link can basically access it if you set it up that way. And then you'll also have to set up the permissions. So if we go to share and then get link down here, if you click change to anyone with the link, and then you can select the permission. So you'll want to set this to the editor and then that will allow anyone with the link to basically have permission to edit your um, translation. After which you can set done and people that you give the link to. So to get the link, you just go to file, share, and you copy the link here. And then you can basically just provide that link to the person that you want to help that wants to help translate your mod and then they'll be able to update this document as they go. So that's basically how that's all set up. And all you need to do to export it now that we've actually changed it is go to file and then what we're going to do is go to, uh, let's see here, um, it's pretty simple. I remember doing it just a second ago. So download and then what we want to do is go to comma separated values dot C S V current sheet. So make sure you're on the current sheet and then it will download the sheet that you're currently on. So in our case, we're on the French translation one. So after you've done that, uh, what you need to do is go over to your downloads folder and my download folder is right here. I'm just going to drag that over. And then what I'm going to do is go back into mCreator and then I'm going to import CSV to current language. And then what we're going to do is select our translated version and it should update in this particular section. So if we go back to the French, you can see this is the same value that we put in to the document. Now it's best to double check to make sure that all the characters have translated properly. Sometimes if you're using Google Sheets or other translators and then import it back into mCritter, the characters might be a little bit wonky, so you might have to replace some of them by hand. So just keep that in mind when you're actually um, setting it up um, because it might be a little bit off. Uh, once you import it back in. All right, so now that we've basically got that all set up, all we need to do is we need to actually go and start creating a procedure that we can use this tra new translation in. So let's hop into a procedure and then we'll start there. Okay, so we're going to create a new procedure and I'm just going to call it uh, um, example procedure. This is this can be whatever you want. It's just for the example. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually set this to a global trigger for player update tick. And this will allow us to use the overlay a little bit easier. So let's go and create a new condition. So we're going to create a if statement and then what we're going to do is we're going to test for an item and we're going to go to entity and then get a, the main hand item of the provided entity. So we have the entity per or dependency and we have X, Y, and Z and world. So we can use the entity particular procedure there. Next, what I'm going to do is go to Minecraft components and I'm going to test for if the player is holding uh, diamond or, and then what I'm going to do is create a else statement, else if, and I'm going to just basically test if they are holding gold or, and then I'm going to finish that off with an else statement, which will just basically reset the translation or the variable to no translation. So now we can basically use a global variable that I've already set up. And then we can basically set this to a certain translation. So I'm just going to set all this the way up like this. And then I'm going to get a string and I'm just going to reset this. So it's not going to display anything. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. 
And if we go down to text, there is a option down here, get localization text key. And then it's a translation key example that we can basically use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that right down on the text string variable. And then we're going to go to our localization. And then what we want to do is get the localization string here. So these are the keys that we need to basically use in this field here. So in our case, this would be the diamond one and our other one should be gold. So I'm just going to set this to gold and then we should be good to go. All right, so now that we have this set up, all we need to do is save our element and then we'll hop in game and I'll show you how this basically works. All right, so we are now currently in game and I'm going to grab our gold ore and I'm going to grab our diamond ore, wherever this may be, there it is. And then I'm just going to chest to see if it's currently displaying at the top of the screen, which it is. It says gold ore here and diamond ore here. So we know that we have a variable that is currently working. So if we go into our options and then we're going to go to uh, language and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the translation language that we basically want to translate to so French should be after E somewhere and then what we're going to do is select the French for France and then that's the translation that we basically converted it to and then what we're going to do is just click OK and hopefully I can reset the settings after and then I'm assuming that's the one that I need and then we're going to go and back to game. Now if we overlay the translation as you can see over here it says or for what we've basically translated it to and this is what we've basically named the diamond or for the translation so diamond um, translation. So that's basically how it works as you can see it's completely different than the English translation. Uh, if we were to go to other languages uh, let's see if I can find the way to get back there, we'll go and try Canadian or, yeah, we'll try Canadian French. And we'll see if this has any effect. And it looks like it's back to in the English version. So if you wanted to basically have support for all French, then you would have to update the French version for all French to basically have the same translation. So that's basically how that works. Uh, hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, uh, don't forget to sub subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace out.